<laughs> okay, I, I heard you. I, I, I get it. Uh, if not you, then it's what seems like thousands of others. People miss my tutorials. Look, I stopped doing them for a reason, and those reasons that I cited a while back in, in a video that I made, they're, they're still a huge concern to me, right? You can look at any dedicated tutorial channel on YouTube. Some of them have got, in some cases, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers for a tutorial channel, but their new tutorial videos, they only get a handful of clicks. A minority of their subscribers watch them. And when YouTube sees that a channel subscribers isn't, they're not clicking on the new videos, it, this, let's just say it displeases the YouTube algorithm greatly. Most new viewers who come across a tutorial for the first time, maybe they've, they've hit a problem in their job, they look for a solution, find a tutorial. What they'll do is they'll skip through it until they're at a point that they're interested in. They'll maybe watch 30 seconds of a 20 minute video and then they vanish off out without really engaging with the video, right? They don't leave a like, they don't write a comment, they don't even remember who the person was that made the video or what the channel name was, right? And this all leaves the creator with another terrible watch time statistic, right? And that's never been more so important than it is right now. All of this very much, again, displeases the YouTube algorithm greatly. A lot of tutorial subscribers, I mean, you might be able to relate to this. I, I can, I've done this in the past, right? They use the subscribe button as just a bookmark, you know? They'll come across a video from a channel. They'll look up the channel, see that they do a lot of videos on something that they're interested in. They'll go, don't have time to watch all this right now. I don't need this all right now. So I'll subscribe as a bookmark for future reference and I'll come back in the future if I ever need it and some reference material. But when 90% of your subscribers are doing just that and they ultimately kind of don't come back, right? Maybe they'll change jobs in the future. Maybe they just don't need the software anymore. They retire, they graduate from school when they needed it or get promoted. Or they just don't need to learn anymore, right? They've got to that point where they just don't need any more help. Whatever it is, you're left with as a creator, just in a perpetual cycle of having an unsustainable channel with YouTube constantly punishing you for what it judges as you making uninteresting bad videos. And it's for me, a huge dilemma. And it's all enhanced further by the fact that my tutorials were centered around one piece of very expensive business software with a very small target audience limited to however many inventor licenses are out there in the world, you know? And realistically, how many of those people are looking up inventor tutorials in their free time? Certainly not enough to justify the time that I was putting into it and needed to continue putting into the tutorial. So all of that's still a problem. All of those issues still exist. So what's changed here? Why am I reconsidering this? Well, there's three things that, is, that are playing on my mind right now, which is putting me into con reconsidering all of this in no particular order. Number one, since I stopped making tutorials, I've had significantly less hands-on time with the software that I specialize in. I've kept myself as up to date as best as I can. And whenever I have used the likes of Inventor in the past few years, I personally don't feel like I've lost anything from memory. It's still, it's like second nature to me, but the lack of hands-on practicing has meant that a lot of the new features that are coming into Inventor, well, I can easily miss them, right? They just pass you by. And at some point, the longer you leave that, you can find yourself seriously stuck in the past. So that's a concern playing on my mind. Point number two, and I began considering this about a year ago, actually, This, and that's reputation. I built this channel on tutorials, and I built a reputation upon being super knowledgeable and an expert within this area. And then I used that reputation as a platform for what I've been doing for the last couple of years and what I'm still doing now, but newcomers to the channel, in fact, anyone coming here within the last couple of years, they probably won't have any idea what I've done in the past, right? What, what, what tutorials, Neil? Who are you? What's your credentials? What's your back? What background have you got? On what authority are you speaking on against all of this stuff that you're doing right now? And being frank, I, I don't blame them. I'd probably be thinking the exact same thing. If I found a new channel and the host hadn't been actively practicing in what he does in the last few years, the thing that he's preaching about, how am I supposed to know who he or she is and what their background is? I do admittedly uh, have a problem, and this is just a me thing. I, it's sort of, it's not hypocritical because I'm acknowledging it and I'm doing, I'm going to probably do something about it, but I've got and always have had a problem with people who are stuck in the past and you know, they continue to leverage their feats and achievements from years ago as some kind of validation that they're capable today. Because that's not always how it works. The world moves on, things change. And this isn't about perpetually having to prove yourself over and over again. I, I, I'm not gonna do that. That would be mentally quite damaging to a creator, but I think it's super important to stay in the game and showcase your abilities now and again. 
just as a reminder that you are pretty good at what you do. So those two points have been on my mind for a while, but point three is what changed absolutely everything and caused me to completely reconsider this. So last week, I was just having a, a benign, <laughs> random conversation with my nine-year-old daughter, and she just casually, off the cuff, straight up said that one of her cousins, the teachers at their school, one of the teachers, uh, well, they play my tutorials at their school still today. And look, I've, I've heard from countless teachers, professors, lecturers all over the world who say they or they do or at least used to use my videos as part of the curriculum all over the world. But this school, it's literally a stone's throw away from where I live. It really is a five minute walk from my house. If, if I was to stand on my roof, I could see the school, you know, I drive past it every day. And the kids who attend it, they all live in my, my street or neighboring streets. And I'm not going to lie, that news, it hit me like a brick. I've never been in that school ever. I didn't go to that school as a kid, never spoken to anyone who works in that school, but they're using my tutorials from probably six or seven years ago in a school that I've, I've grew up in this neighborhood my entire life. That hit that, I, I don't know, hopefully they, they were watching the videos that didn't have any fruity language in, but I don't know, still, it just brought it all back down to reality and it really did hit home. So although, although these super old videos and tutorials mostly still stand tall and are quite relevant today, as each day goes by, they're getting older and older. And at some point, those videos that I made you know, nine years ago now, they're just gonna be completely obsolete. And just saying out loud some sort of self-reflection here, when my work has reached a school and is having a positive impact on the kids that are growing up in my neighborhood, that's what changed everything. But I'm still left with the same problems right, that I first mentioned. I can't continue to operate as, as basically a charity. For the last year, aside from one or two sponsored projects, I've worked completely unpaid and I've hit the point now where I have to change what I'm doing. I absolutely have to, I've got no choice. Obviously tutorials alone though aren't gonna be the answer to that. So I need to come up with some kind of feasible and sustainable method for making this well, financially viable for me. Uh, in the past, I've tried a Patreon, but frankly speaking, that, that didn't work. Uh, plus, I'm not really a huge fan of asking people to leave YouTube and go off to another site that they've never heard of. I, I tried donations in the past, but again, being frank, most people just don't want to donate, which is fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do, or at least consider, is try leveraging the YouTube membership program again. Uh, only this time, I'm not going to be putting tutorials down as members-only content, which is what I tried to in the past. Uh, that didn't work. Instead, all future tutorials, if, if I do start making them again, will be free to all, as usual, but I'm probably going to put like the files and the data sets that are used in the tutorials and make them available as a members only perk. So if I do an invented tutorial, I'll put the finished model up as a members perk uh, or the starting point. If I do a VRED tutorial, uh, the full textured scene or a starting point uh, will be available as a members perk. Uh, but more importantly, the tutorials absolutely have to span out and beyond just inventor. I've got no choice in that matter. I can't just limit and pigeonhole myself into one bit of software. So very likely, nice Fusion 360 uh, was, is going to be a mainstay. Uh, VRED, Vault, uh, possibly even AutoCAD. Depends. If you're watching this and you've got a keen interest in my return tutorials, please let me know in the comments what you'd find value in as having as a membership perk. If that is something you consider, just take into consideration that I can't do tutorials on areas that I'm not qualified in or I've got no experience in. So things like, I know, I, I've done, often had people ask me really random things like, can you do a tutorial on how to design a boat hull? No, <laughs> what do I know about designing a boat hull? I'm just not qualified in that area. Um, I can't do complete guides to iLogic, for example, certain areas within certain bits of software that I've just got zero experience in. Uh, I can't offer one-to-one -one personal phone calls either as part of a perk um, or remote assistance for individuals. Again, just being totally transparent here and upfront. If a membership is, I don't know, 4 dollars a month, let's be sensible here. I can't put aside and dedicate potentially several hours of time over a month to just one individual for like $4.99. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, is a membership like this worth more than $4.99? I don't know. I'm still pondering all of this. I see many entertainment channels selling thousands of memberships for more than that each month and all they offer in return is some daft icon or digital sticker or the opportunity to use members only chat in a chat live stream that just goes super fast and your chat never gets read so th th those are my reasons uh, at the moment I'm still looking into how I can make this work and how much potential there is here 
I think a lot of my now nearly nine-year-old tutorials are candidates for a remaster, you know, like a, a modern refresh. So there's potential there for a good stream of content along with all the latest additions to Fusion 360. And hopefully, hopefully more free home learning licenses becoming available, which could open up my target market into reaching a lot more people if Autodesk open that for more uh, products in their stack. So if you've got any thoughts or suggestions on this, please let me know in the comments. I'll be keeping a very close eye on this one to everything being suggested. So thanks in advance for that. Uh, I don't have a set of targets for when I might or will start doing this again, but it's very much back on the table. It's on the agenda and internal negotiations are well underway in my scrambled up head right now. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in a bit. Toodles.